please give a warm welcome to Priyanka Sharma. Hello everyone. Remember that time? It was KubeCon Cloud NativeCon Berlin in 2017, so many years ago. It was so much fun. I remember it like yesterday. Today is a little bit different. I'm filming this message with an amazing group of people who are all masked up and safely distanced. Needless to say, very different from KubeCon Cloud NativeCon Berlin. I miss meeting new people, shaking hands, having conversations, and just enjoying myself in the smorgasbord of humanity that is our KubeCons Cloud NativeCons. Life has changed, but Cloud Native has persevered. Life has been challenging for all of us as we have now shifted into new routines. When I think about the COVID-19 era, one thing is clear. This is not just a blip in our history. Just like many major world events before this, it is my opinion that we will look back at COVID-19 much the same. In this change-filled time, we have all had to adapt. I mean, just in the past year, suddenly, all restaurants needed to figure out how to take an online order. We needed to learn to work from home. Pharmaceutical companies had to build vaccines in record time using mRNA technology. And finally, contact tracing apps had to be built within three months in privacy respecting manners. This makes me think, remember when digital transformation used to be a buzzword? That time is gone now. And cloud native has been front and center of these efforts, keeping everyone connected. It is my belief that because of this momentum in the world today, we in Team Cloud Native will usher in an era of technology that will create more intelligent, seamless experiences for the ultimate end users, human beings. Take, for example, healthcare. COVID-19 has made us innovate faster than ever before in that space. And I'm proud to say that Cloud Native has been the foundation for this innovation. Let's talk about Anthem, an innovation leader dedicated to improving health. They use Cloud Native technologies such as Kubernetes, Envoy, Spiffy, and Open Policy Agent to build scalable applications which require rapid development and deployment. Anthem, in collaboration with Cloud Medex, mapped COVID-19 spread with C19 Explorer. They estimate vaccine availability with C19 vaccines, and they identify communities at risk of food insecurity and food deserts with close at home. All this is built on cloud native. These are just a few examples of large scale efforts to combat COVID-19 that directly impact human beings and cloud native has been the backbone for them. In the future, we will have much more data available because of the upcoming 5G smart devices. And I believe we will want to correlate it to health. With Cloud Native's efficiency for machine learning workloads, unique applicability to telco and edge software development, and a privacy first mindset, I see us enabling an experiential, intelligent era for human beings to benefit from technology rather than be beholden to it. Take, for example, the daily business of food and food delivery. Thank you. I was able to order on DoorDash to our shoot location because I knew I'd get hungry. <laughs> I wasn't wrong. Food delivery companies have seen major spikes with orders increasing more than 100% during the pandemic. I might be responsible for half of them. DoorDash, by the way, uses Kubernetes. Other apps have used Project Spire to securely scale the authentication of critical services, bringing us the restaurants we love and want to support right to our homes. I imagine in the post-pandemic era, a lot of the home delivery behavior will stay, as will a lot of other digital behaviors which we have acquired or accelerated during this time. With the immense amount of data collected by these apps, they will utilize artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies to provide a more intelligent, 
nuanced experience for human beings, both in app and IRL in store. However, it's no secret that machine learning workflows are extremely compute intensive and need optimal resource utilization. I mean, this is where cloud native shines. I was actually just talking to my friends at Ericto and they were telling me how they've helped the MLOps team at Shell, the oil and gas company, speed up their new energy trading models into production 30 times faster than when they were using traditional ML workflow tools. Back in 2018, we heard from a totally different type of company, Booking.com, when they shared how they were using Kubernetes for their ML pipelines. A totally different topic, climate change, which is increasingly more menacing for all of us world dwellers, also greatly benefits from machine learning. And cloud native is an excellent fit for those workflows. Let's talk for a second about the human beings building all these workflows. We, all of us who build all these things, are creating the human experience with technology. And now we're all in home offices. We're actually glued to our workstations. Now that we've worked from home, it's unlikely people will want the restrictions of a nine to five job in the office again. Flexibility will be the key to the work in the future. I imagine a new human experience where our devices will help us seamlessly transition from in office to at home or anywhere in the world really, like this studio for instance. While seamlessly synced devices are cool, being stuck to the desk is not fun for most of us. Not the best human experience. But here too, Team Cloud Native never ceases to amaze. Just the other day, Chris from HP shared how they were so tired of the usual Zoom calls and this and that, that they used QuakeCube, which is a Kubernetesified version of QuakeJS that runs a dedicated Quake3 server in a Kubernetes deployment and then allows clients to connect via QuakeJS in the browser. So the team ended up playing Quake 3 together remotely. <laughs> they even used K3S and Raspberry Pis. Talk about edge computing taking off. <laughs> because of how critical we are to the world right now, Cloud Native has grown to new heights in the pandemic. The number of people passionate about Cloud Native is growing. Just looking at our code contributors, we have grown from 81,000 people in 2019 to over 118,000 today. You Team Cloud Native have grown by 46%. And this doesn't even include all the people in this community of doers who contribute in other ways, such as evangelists, marketers, product people, event organizers, the list goes on. It was during the pandemic that we introduced the sandbox process for our projects. Today, the number of projects in CNCF has grown by more than 95% to 91 projects in total. Every day, I hear stories of all of our projects being used in new and innovative ways, and that includes the sandbox. For example, I just heard lately that Project Captain is used in mission-critical clinical trial software teams who are helping test COVID-related remedies. Inspired by all this momentum, we have had a 20% growth in the number of member companies in CNCF. Two amazing organizations that have joined us lately are AT&T and New Relic at the platinum level. Let's go chat with Zayn from New Relic. Hi Zayn, thank you so much for joining me here today for my keynote with Team Cloud Native. Hi Priyanka, thanks a lot for having me here. I'm super excited. Awesome. So I hear that you're the general manager of open source and Pixie at New Relic. And in addition to that, you're also an adjunct professor of computer science at Stanford. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally a lot of work, but you know, I like, I like staying busy. That's awesome. So what is Pixie? Yeah, so Pixie is a uh, Kubernetes native and cluster observability platform. And you know our, our team really built Pixie uh, with the vision that observability should be painless 
open and a part of every developer's workflow. Yes, yep. big believer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and New Relic acquired us um, at the end of last year mm. to really help us realize the shared vision. Congratulations. Thank you. So, um, Zain, you know, here what we've been talking about is how because of the pandemic that we've all been going through, a lot of human experiences are moving online and companies are rushing to digitize. Uh, you have such a rich background. I mean, edge computing, machine learning, observability. There's nothing I can find that you haven't worked on. <laughs> so tell me, how do you see cloud native powering this innovation? Yeah, um, absolutely. I'm happy to you know, give, my, give my take on it. Um, it you know, as, as we've seen in the last year, it's really no secret um, that our lives are basically being put online. But you know, another change that's really been happening is that software is starting to get built more and more using data. Hmm. Um, you know, some people call this software software 2.0, hmm. and um, I actually think that that's going to be a, a big part of what happens in the future because machine learning and AI, which is a core part of this, uh, can really leverage the improved uh, data processing and compute capabilities that cloud native offers. Hmm. Can you describe a little bit further software 2.0 or building software with data? Yeah, a absolutely. So you know, traditionally, the way software has worked for for decades is that you know, you write code, the code explains like what the program should be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and really you land up with this imperative program on like how do you mm -hmm. actually, uh, on what the program should, should actually, you know, what functions the program should actually be performing. With software 2.0, uh, the idea is that the program is actually defined by data, right? So if you wanna build something for a photos app which categorizes photos in a particular way, you would basically build your application by giving a sample of the data and having some machine learning model really figure out how that works. And because our world's getting more and more data driven and we have you know, photos everywhere, tons of data available, we'll be using this, this data to actually construct the programs that'll, that'll ultimately uh, build some experience. And one of the things that happens over here is that you actually will need to even build observability for your data, which is something that hasn't really, really happened. And no. you know, my, um, actually some, uh, some of the work I'm doing at Stanford is actually around building that for, for edge-based systems. Very cool, very cool. That kind of ties into probably why New Relic was also a sponsor of the Kubernetes on AI Day. Absolutely, and you know, part of this is Pixie is itself also an edge-based uh, machine learning platform, so we, we ah. do that, yeah. So all sorts of amazing things are happening now, Zane. I'm curious, how did uh, New Relic decide to up their investment and commitment to CNCF and become a Platinum member? Yeah, absolutely, Priyanka. Our in increase in investment is primarily about making developers' lives easy, hmm. right? We really awesome. want to make sure that all these observability tools really connect together and developers don't have to deal with a bunch of different proprietary standards. As part of that, you know, we're, we're going all in on open telemetry. Sweet. Um, we are also donating Pixie, which is open telemetry compliant to CNCF. Woohoo! <laughs> right. And, you know, we're going to be uh, using, uh, using this and our investments in the community to, to really help make um, URL like the default observability SaaS vendor. That is awesome. So Zane, you are a man of many talents, <laughs> a lot of knowledge, and if the folks who've been listening here want to continue the conversation, where should they find you? Yeah, so you know, this year we'll be at our virtual booth um, uh, tomorrow, so please you know, feel free to schedule some, some time and I'll be uh, happy to chat about it. Super, super excited to, to meet folks in the community and, and chat more. Awesome. So folks, go to the New Relic booth in the expo hall and set up time to meet with Zane. Now, that was fun. I really enjoyed my chat with Zane. All of this is because of you. Cloud Native has been the scaffolding of the COVID era. We, Team Cloud Native, we beautiful, diverse community of doers are the reason this has happened. We have taken care of each other and help the world. I have met many in the community who shrugged off hopelessness with the camaraderie in Cloud Native. I actually made a friend on Twitter, Mrithunjay, a student in India who defeated depression, nepotism, hopelessness about the future with internships with us through Google Summer of Code and LFX. Today, he's a committed member of the community, inspiring others and living our values. Let's go give him a call. Hi, Mrithyanjay. Hi, Priyanka, and a warm welcome and a thank you to all the community members of Cloud Native for having me here 
I am so honored to be here. The honor is all ours. Thank you so much for staying up so late. <laughs> no worries at all. No worries at all. So, Mrityanje, any message for Team Cloud Native? Yeah, definitely. I have I have a great message to share as well as a small little part of my journey as well. So, before Please. beginning, I would like to uh, pray and hope that whoever is watching our video today is doing well in this pandemic, is staying safe and taking good care of their health. If I have to tell you about my story, then I think it begins from my childhood when I faced tumor in leg at the age of 10. I think that spirit helped me face a lot of struggle that I had to in my college. In college, I was made to think that life is doomed here because I did not join a great university. And I think that affected my mind a lot in my first year. And I was told that I can't achieve my dreams ahead. I was bullied by a few classmates for being short. And that shortness was actually because of my tumor in leg. However, somehow I started using LinkedIn, Twitter, and, get, and I started getting involved in open source communities and other communities. It was then when I started dreaming again. I started to dream again. And there was an enlightenment within me that how to achieve good things, even by being this in this college, by being outside the comfort zones. And so I got the opportunity to attend Open Source Summit in Europe 2019 and as a scholarship recipient where I got the opportunity to meet, meet you, Priyanka, to Erika Brescia, the CEO of GitHub, or, the, or Linus Torvalds himself, the creator of Linux. So that was an amazing opportunity for me where I got amazing friends as well as from international communities. That helped me achieve internships or programs like Google Summer of Code, where I contributed in open source projects like RTMS. And now as an LFX, I'm contributing to Kubernetes, which is a cloud native graduated project. And this is just an amazing, amazing opportunity for me. The community has been so helpful in not only onboarding me, but also helping me contribute to the initial issues and now finally merging few PRs as well, pull requests as well. So this pandemic cloud native community has been like, a watershed moment for me. It has instilled the confidence, the much needed confidence that our 20 year old boy needed. And I think any student watching this, let me tell you that start taking part in communities, join cloud native communities. It is warm, it is welcoming. There are people like Priyanka, me and everyone here to welcome you, to onboard you, to help you take your first step to cloud native. And I'm thankful to all of you for empowering me so that I can empower others. Thank you so much. Even in a time of adversity, we were strengthened by our diversity-powered resilience. This community welcomed all, including Windows developers. To keep the magic alive, we have been ever creative. I even heard the Avengers of Cloud Native are assembling to create a whole series of shows starting on Twitch soon. Check them out. Team Cloud Native, I am so proud of you. The world will face more uncertainty in the time to come, and our fight is not over yet. The only constant in life is change. And we are going through another transition as we move towards the end of this pandemic. The post-pandemic era will be very different from our lives before COVID-19. If nothing else, businesses will be much more modernized technologically. In an era of accelerated digitization of business, we will see a proliferation of data and with the use of edge computing and AI ML, I believe technology will be able to create more intelligent experiences for the ultimate end users, human beings. As we are building and rebuilding ourselves and the world around us, I think things are starting to turn. Vaccines are out and they're looking effective. We're all on different vaccination schedules and that has been very challenging. <laughs> but there is light at the end of this tunnel. It is my fervent hope that I will see some of you in person in Los Angeles for KubeCon Cloud NativeCon North America. And from there on, more and more of us will be able to meet and I will be on a real stage with the real people in front of me at KubeCon Cloud NativeCon EU 2022. Until then, Team Cloud Native, 
Let's rise up to the occasion as we have this past year. Let's build for the human experience that will make our lives richer, safer, and healthier. Thank you and enjoy the show.